how's it going? So today's video is another video all about biomedical sciences exams. Now I made another video talking about how to study for biomedical sciences exams but that was focusing on the multiple choice questions and I said it in that video and I'm gonna say it in this video my god I wish that I knew a bunch of these things when I was doing my degree. Now in case you missed it I made a video not so long ago asking you guys to send in any questions that you have that you would like me to make a video on. So let's just get into the question. Firstly, thank you very much for your question. I know it is a common struggle. Now, while multiple choice exams test your overall understanding of a topic, the more essay-based exams require you to discuss a topic and think things through, and for those really high grades, require you to bring in a little bit of extra reading. <laughs> Now I think it's important for me to also define what they class as extra reading because a lot of people panic and think oh my god extra reading I'm going to have to read so many papers and do so much extra work but and double check this with your university but in my university extra reading could be classed as something that is in your module but in a different lecture. The way it worked at my university anyway was that each question that you get would be answered would be sorry would be marked by the person giving the lecture. So if another lecturer tells you another piece of information that's kind of related to that topic, then bringing that in and talking about it there classes as extra reading. And it saves you a lot of time. Now, I'm going to get into the questions, but I'm also going to go ahead and assume that all of your notes and your lecture slides and the content is all complete, and now you just want to learn it all and apply it in a way to get the highest grades in your essay exams. Number one, create an essay structure. I think it's important to realize that essays have an overarching theme of discussion. And for that reason, you don't necessarily have to just write down as much as you can remember of the topic in as quick of a time as you can, but more the case of arguing different points and going through certain pathways and explaining things and linking them together. And I think it is that element of critical thinking that helps you get the highest marks. So to make things a little bit easier, I'm just going to go through a really, really basic essay structure plan with you. And I've got my laptop to help me with some notes. So the first thing that I've written down is just introduce the topic by defining things. So for example, the question you could be asked is, how does P53 protect you from developing tumours? Now you can start by defining what P53 is. So you could say P53 is a tumour suppressor gene that works in the following pathway. Next, you could define what a tumour is. So a tumour is a mass that is formed as a result of uncontrolled cell growth. Super simple and you can go in as much or as little detail as you would like. But generally, I would say for the purpose of time, keep it brief. Now, the second point that I have written down is discuss the P53 pathway and discuss how it functions normally when the organism is free of cancer or free of a tumour. And I think it's really good where you can to make annotations and even draw a little schematic of what the pathway looks like, if you can remember. I know there's like loads of different things and elements involved, so don't worry if you can't. Then, following the theme of discussion, I've written that you can discuss what happens when the pathway goes wrong and why this pathway leads to a tumour. So here you can talk about dysregulation in certain parts of the pathway and how this might lead to mutations that can lead to replications and ultimately lead to the development of a tumour. Now, after this initial discussion, I think is the perfect opportunity to throw in a little bit of further reading. So I've written in my notes, you can say something like, Jones et al. showed that P53 dysregulation leads to a subtype of breast cancer or something along those lines. And I guess if you want to get even more points, you could talk about not only the implication of P53 dysregulation and tumours, but you could also say something like, Smith et al. has shown that in a subset of breast cancers, a certain type of drug can target this mutation and increase life expectancy. And then you can end your essay structure by adding a final concluding paragraph that can say something along the lines of P53 protects you from tumours as it regulates genes and it prevents uncontrollable cell proliferation, but obviously a little bit more expanded. 
and that kind of just brings everything together and fully answers the question. Now I know it is quite difficult to take the notes that you have and put it in the structure, but that is exactly my next tip. And sorry guys, I think I'm gonna have to do the blinds because the sun is like penetrating my eyeballs. Okay, that's a bit better. <laughs> okay, what was I saying? Oh yes, so the second point is find a way to fit the notes that you already have into the essay structure that I've just described. So something I would recommend personally is once you have your essay structure, you can open up a Word document, have your headings for the things that I discussed. So introduction, um, definitions, discussion, further reading and conclusion. And then literally copy and paste your notes if they're electronic into that format. Now you will find that it will be a little bit patchy and things might not fit in exactly into the format but then you can do the editing process and go over and kind of make it all fit into something that flows nicely. And you can pick the question yourself. And I really seem to find that when you have like a choppy essay like this, that you have to go over and add things to and elaborate, then it really helps you remember it too, because you have done like an active process of putting something together rather than just reading something and rereading and hoping it sticks. <laughs> Three is when you put your essays together, add your further reading notes in a different colour. So further reading is incredibly important and I think if you are writing your notes or if you're typing them up, by putting it in a different colour it helps it stand out and you can differentiate it from the rest of the content. Now as I said at the beginning of the video, further reading constitutes of reliable sources of information like papers and certain websites, but also different lecture material. So if your essay is on one topic and you take a little bit of information from another lecture and you put it in this topic, then highlight that in a different colour too, because technically it's further reading. Now number four is getting the relevant information to use as part of your further reading. I know a lot of people automatically gravitate towards papers, but the difficult thing with papers is that they can be really complex and you have to be careful what kind of information you take from them. So here are a few tips that I think are super useful when choosing your further reading material. Firstly, if you're completely new to the topic, as I was with a lot of the things I had to study about in my undergraduate, I think that reviews are amazing. Reviews give you a good opportunity to get an overview for not just one particular study but also the field and I tend to find that they, the way of written communication in reviews is a bit more easy to digest if you like and one of the best things about review papers is they cite all of the specific studies in the paper. So if you come across something really relevant in a review you might think ah okay so I'm just gonna look at that reference open up the study and then take information from there to use as my further reading. Now the second point is even if you do decide to choose some complex papers, try and focus on the abstract and the conclusion. Remember that for the purpose of your biomedical sciences essay exams, you're not necessarily expected to write a full review on studies that have been done. So as long as you get a general point across, Jones et al showed this, then you're probably fine. And I think the abstract and the conclusion are a really, really good and time efficient way to extract the information without having to get bogged down with masses and masses of data. Number five is make a list of all of your further reading studies. So assuming that you have done the above points for all of your modules, you're going to realise that there are going to be so many different studies so, you know, X et al, and Y et al, and Z et al, and honestly, some people's names are so confusing that that in itself is a challenge to try and remember. So this is the way I try to tackle and digest that. I would write down the surnames of the people and a one sentence, maximum two sentence, of what the study is and what it's about, and then I would separate that into different modules and just find a way of remembering those and 
associating the right study with the right name. I think here it helps to be a little bit goofy about it and kind of come up with associations that you might remember. So again, as I always like to give nerdy references in all of my videos, let's say Smith et al produced a paper all about viruses. I could think, well, Agent Smith from The Matrix was almost like a virus, so Smith, viruses. Or something equally ridiculous. I don't know. Be creative. <laughs> now number six, and this is by far the thing that helped me the most personally when I was doing my exams, is find a bunch of past paper or past questions write an essay based on the revision notes and the lecture notes that you already have and then send it to all of your tutors and PIs and supervisors to check and give you feedback. I would highly highly recommend this because sometimes even if your memory is very good at recalling all of the information in the exam, if you recall the non-relevant things or if you recall certain things that may not be that useful to the exam, ultimately you may end up getting low marks. So I think it's super, super important to send your practice essays to lecturers and honestly, nine times out of 10, they're more than happy to read through and give you feedback. And that way you can identify if you have any mistakes or if there is something that keeps coming up over and over again so that you can work on it, improve and get higher marks in the actual exam. So those were a bunch of my tips and advice. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe for more. And as always guys, I shared with you just a couple of things that helped me personally, but I know you guys are all different. So if you have any methods that I forgot to mention, then please leave them below. I always like to hear from you. I really hope that you do well in these exams and I wish you the best of luck if you've got them coming up. I hope you all have an amazing day and until next time, take care and I will see you later.